this video, I am going to show you how to install a metal security door. They aren't that hard, but you can run into a few problems. They can be a little tedious depending on what you are attaching to. So I'm going to go over all that stuff and you'll be able to do this just like that. First thing you need to do is measure your door. Doors come in standard sizes. And these metal security doors are typically sold for 36 inch doors or 32 inch doors. This happens to be a 36 inch door. You don't have to get the exact measurement. You don't even have to open up the door. I look at this, I can see that's a 36 inch door. So here's the door that I have selected and the doors are standard height. They are made to cover 80 inch doors, which is what we have. And you see this here says 36 inches. At the Home Depot, they sell metal security doors for 36 inch openings and 32 inch openings. And also there are about three grades of metal security door. The cheapest ones I never recommend. They're extremely flimsy. This is the mid range door, costs about $150. And then you can go $250 and up if you want. So we chose the mid range door. I'm gonna show you how to put it in. First thing we do is open it up. There are three elements to this, actually, four elements. This is the top piece, goes across the top of the door. We've got the door itself, and it's important to know that these are reversible. I can mount it this way, or turn it around and mount it this way. Important to know, these swing out, and you cannot install them if the door to your house swings out. You cannot have two doors swinging in the same direction. Don't even think about it. You want to put one of these on, the door to your house has to be an in-swing. Also comes with this, the strike side, and then when you look inside where the locks go, you have your hardware. Usually comes with a tool, comes with a bit. They give you these security screws. These only go in, they do not come out. And here's the bit you put on your drill to insert the security screws. And I'm gonna show you how to do this so you don't screw it up. Got the door laid out as if this is the inside. So we're standing inside, the grass is the outside. So I've got the door facing down. Here's the strike. These shorter edges go outside. You wanna leave yourself enough room here for the locks to engage. So when we install this, we don't want this thing out here. Obviously that's too far. And we don't want it flush up against there because the locks are gonna be installed here. So we need like just under a quarter inch is fine. Okay, so that's how the thing is gonna lay out. Since we know we want the strike to be right here, let's take our top piece and you see this top piece has this nylon cap on it. The outside of this goes right inside the nylon cap, right at the edge of the metal. And then the same thing over here. Where the metal part meets the nylon cap, that's gonna be the outside of our doors. And that's important because that's how we're gonna go lay it out in the doorway. Before you install a metal security door, there's a couple of things you need to check. Obviously, the measurements. We know this is 36 by 80, so this is gonna fit. You'll also need to look around. Is there something to attach it to? Now this has this uh, one by siding. This is the easiest thing to attach to. And I'm gonna show you some other examples that are a little more tricky because this is too simple. You also need to have the distance between the outside and your doorknobs because sometimes this jam is too shallow. When you install the door, it's gonna close on the doorknobs. So sometimes you actually have to build a frame out to give this door enough room. So we're gonna use this top piece and the strike side to determine where this thing is gonna go. So here's our strike side. We know our strike can't be out here because we're gonna have a doorknob in this thing. So if the strike is out here, the doorknob is gonna be hitting this. But it can't be in this far because then our screws won't be screwing into anything. So we need to find that happy medium where our strike is. And you see, since our deadbolt and our knobs are gonna be right here, will they hit this lock? Okay, our doorknob is gonna be right here. And that's how I like to put it, right here, because the, de the deadbolts are not gonna hit. But sometimes these doorknobs line up. And if that's the case, you might have to raise 
or lower this, or again, you might have to say like put another two by four or a one by four or something on here to build this out so that your doorknobs don't hit. So we're gonna put this thing right here. I want my strike right there. Then I know the edge of this metal is gonna line up with the edge of this metal. So if I look over here, right here is where I want the edge of my door. And that's how I'm gonna lay it out. So now with this line, I can get the actual door and line it up right there. The top piece plays no part in the security. It's just for looks. Your top piece is gonna go like that. Look where my top piece goes. And it goes right there. So see how the, the screws are offset? Even if I put them facing up like that, I still don't have enough to screw into anything. So I want to go up to here. That would be ideal. My knob is going to go right here. So my knob is good there. I've raised that thing up about three quarters of an inch. When I place my door, I'm going to put this three quarter of an inch spacer right there and set my door on top of it. Now, as I mentioned, installing a door like this on this sort of siding is the easiest situation there is. And oftentimes you could have brick or stucco and a little bit of molding or the molding is curved and slanted. And then it becomes much more critical to find the point of where you're going to attach. And that's why after we get this installed, I'm going to show you some other situations and how to deal with them. Okay, I've got my door in place, ready to go. I haven't even done any measuring. I don't need a level. I don't care if anything is plumb. We're going to use these at the end for security. But to test, we're going to use these. This is just a three inch screw and I put a couple washers on it so that I can screw it in and hold the door in place, but not commit to anything. Because sometimes the door moves around. Sometimes you screw something up. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. And that's why you want to do it with something you can easily insert and remove. Then when you've got it all done, then you'll use the final security screws. So here we go. So I put my door up on my spacer. Here's my line. Now I've got my door on the line. I can just eye it up. Again, I don't care if it's plumb. I just kind of eye it up. So there's my line. I'm just going to put in my screw right here. Okay, just nice and snug. I could put a level on here and check and see if this is plumb, but I really don't care. It's not that critical. We're just gonna eye it up and we want it to uh, look good. So I've got one and a half inches right here. So I'm just gonna make a mark at one and a half inches up here. Pull it over to my one and a half inch mark, put in another screw. That distance there between here and here, it's just under a quarter inch. And if you look at the door, you'll see the door comes almost to that hole. So I know that this is where I want this thing to be. So I'm just gonna put a line right there. So that way I know, you know, I don't want it to be out here and I don't want my line to disappear. I want that line to be right on the edge of the door and then I know everything is lined up properly. And then here's another thing I'll do. And again, this thin side is facing the outside. So I get the strike holes centered on the lock where the bolt is gonna come out. So those are, and you have quite a bit of play. This thing can go way up and down. Once I have those centered right there, I'm gonna put a line right here. When those two lines are together, I know my lock holes line up, but I also know I could move this thing a little bit up and a little bit down and it'll still work because these holes are so big. See, I could move it all the way down there. So you see, I can move it a half inch either way. When I see my line, that's where I want it as far as left to right is concerned. So I just have two screws in here. Again, I don't really care if this is plumb. I, I wanna see how this lines up. Now look at the top. See the door just hits the edge of that casing. So look down here. That's like a half inch difference. Remember, we wanted to put these things right here. So I wanna make sure my screw is not going through the very edge of this. I want this thing, you know, to be right there. So I know that's not a good position. I'll take out the middle screw and I'll just swing the door over till that bottom lines up with the edge there. And then I know everything will be straight. Okay. 
you see, we're gonna move it right over to there. Does that look good? Mm hmm. Okay. Put in another screw. Now that we're lined up there, see, I just hold that in place. And I know the door is gonna work, and I know we're up high enough. Not gonna put this thing on yet. We're gonna get this secured. So now that this is held in place, we wanna get this side anchored before we put in the strike side. So I'm gonna drill this out. Now we're gonna put in our first security screw. If you put in one of these screws, always double check your door. If you have to take that thing out, it's not easy, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now we're gonna take out the bottom one. I'm gonna make a, a line here just to make sure we don't move. But I've got this bottom supported so it can't shift around. And I recommend using a corded drill for this or an impact driver. The tool they give you does not fit my impact driver. This is a great uh, cordless drill, but it doesn't work in all surfaces. Now we check everything, we'll see we got a door that's working. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the strike side, get our lines set up, and once again, put in the three inch screws with the washers as a test. So that's lined up and we wanna double check it. And what can happen with these, especially when you're on uneven surfaces, if the molding is tapered or curved, or if you're on stucco, this piece, when you screw it in, can go like that. And even if it moves just a tiny bit, that can screw up your locks. So that's why you have to be careful for that. Make sure this is on a flat surface. Now with this one in place, my lines look good. I just kind of eye it up. And I also look in here, because you don't want to get this thing too close. You screw this thing up and you know, the bottom of the door starts rubbing. You just ruined a nice job. And you don't want to pull it out too far so there's a gap i just look and try to keep like that nice quarter inch gap and again you'll see when that final screw is in it usually just rubs up against the edge of the door so that's how you know you're in the right spot so we're going to put in this screw everything's looking good and another thing you want to look for is this flush See how the edge of the door hits the edge of the jam from top to bottom? The door was going like this or like that, and you know it's only hitting on top or it's only hitting on the bottom, and you have to move the door or the strike in some way to get them to all line up. Well, there we go. So I'm gonna replace the temp screws. I tried putting this in with the cordless and it died right there. And once that happens, you can't get that in or out. <laughs> so that's why I recommend using a corded drill because it has more torque. You can crank that down. There. So I'm gonna lay the top piece on. Remember, this is just decorative. It plays no role in the security. So I don't have to put test screws in there. I'm just gonna drill these and put in our safety screws. Last thing you gotta do is install the locks. And uh, I just put one in there and test it. I think that works. With this metal security door, you screw these in, you screw in your bolts, just like you would in any other lock, but you don't use your strike plates. They're not necessary and they um, take up too much space. You just use these. Now with the locks installed, we do one final test. Make sure everything locks, it should all move very easily. Just like that. That's how you install the metal security door. Now here's an example of a nice challenge. Gotta put our strike side here. The strike side is going to go like that. But you can see how the stucco is uneven and this uh, stucco molding has a little curve to it. So if I wanted to mount it like that, well first I couldn't because the screw is too close to the wall. But even if I could, what happens sometimes is because this is an uneven surface, the piece wants to do that. It, it wants to get crooked like that. It just can't do it like that. So there's a couple things you could do. 
You could chip away at this or grind it and get it all flat. Or sometimes you could put another piece of wood on here. Sometimes you can work shims. I've you know taken a very thin piece of wood and cut it on the table saw and then just nailed it right to here to bring it even with the stucco. But in this case, actually gonna get lucky because we've got just enough lip there. Cause see how this hole is on the outside of our piece. So this will just sit on that lip there and there will be just enough room. See our hole. Cause remember we're either screwing into the jam or to the two by fours right next to the jam. So you've got to find something in there to anchor to. Now here's a perfect example of uh, uneven molding causing me a problem. I'm just doing the test and when I screwed this thing in, it wants to go like that. It wants to tilt because that molding is uneven. That molding, if you're looking down on it, is angled like that. And therefore when I tighten the screw, it's making the frame go like that. So I, I bring these composite shims with me. Unlike wood, these aren't gonna break down if they get wet. I just cut it back to get enough in there. And now when I tighten this thing down, it tightens this piece, but it doesn't make it kick out on an angle. So now, that's perfect. And I'll have to do the same thing here. See this, this gap, if I tighten it, this thing's gonna go So wedge something in there, put those screws in, and that'll keep it nice and tight. 